All sorts of questions that are being asked as to why does this continually seem to happen uh, to Celtic and Rangers, for that matter. Don't think they're going to pass out of this. Uh, there's a message. They've done well in Europe recently. Come on. Well, they got they got to the final against Eintracht Frankfurt, the Europa League. And they lost did all right it. last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rangers, of course, beaten by seven one at home by Liverpool, and that shouldn't be forgotten. It's not being forgotten. But Celtic, not for the first time, losing seven in a European match last night, seven one thumping at the hands of Borussia Dortmund. Why, when Brendan says we've got various measures being put into place to ensure that we put in a good show tonight, this was before the game. Post match, it's a very different story. What is it down to? Why does it keep happening? I mean, at the end of the day, is Celtic's European problems? Is it is it less to do with financials, more to do with tactical arrogance? What is it to do? Tactical ineptitude. I know it sounds strong, but you have to ask it. Why does it keep happening? Why? That's Brendan's second 7-1 Champions League defeat he suffered at the club, and that's on top of a 5-0, 6-0, and 7-0. Mark's a Celtic fan, joins us live. Mark, good morning. I think um, you you join us periodically. I'm delighted, Mark. What do you want to say? Yeah, yeah, Jim. Uh, I'm a bit shell shocked, quite frankly, as as we all are. Uh, what we can't understand is I, I'm all for going on the front foot at the start of the game uh, and trying to impose your style. Uh, and at one one and even two one, we were still in the game. But at that point especially when the third goal goes in soon after, you have to have a look around. You have to go, right, we need to sit in here for at least 15 minutes, mm. regain, regain our composure, sit and defend manfully, maybe play one up top, try and hit on the counter, and just keep it tight and remain in the game. But we didn't do that. And even at 5-1, 6-1, 7-1, we were still high press, high line. Every time we gave the ball away, they were in on goal. And it's just utter madness. And I blame the manager, first and foremost, but I also blame the players in the park because you have to look around and realise what's happening mid-game and make the changes yourself. Pull one over to it, you sit in here with me, we'll just sit here, we'll defend and we'll try and just keep our composure and stay solid for 15, 20 minutes. Stay Mark, Mark here's Danny on that. Uh, well, I think you make some great points. Do you, th- do you think Brendan's philosophy on this particular game was based on A, the la- the first good result in the Champions League, I know it was at home and also the really strong start to the season and maybe he got a little bit lulled into thinking you're a bit better than you are, do you, do, would that be fair? Sure Danny, I think we all did, quite frankly uh, I was texting friends and work colleagues yesterday, saying, oh, I think we've got a chance tonight mm, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, we, were all, we were all of that mindset because we have been playing some fantastic football uh, I know it's only St Johnston, but at the weekend, it's some of the best football I've seen us play in, since probably Tommy mm. Burns back in the late 90s. Uh, and obviously the, the, the home win against Bratislava gets you thinking, all right, we can do this. But so, so it's more understandable then, really, that even Brendan maybe believed in that team a little bit more. I think what I'd say to you, I mean, you make a great point on the players. I mean, there's a time on the pitch where forget what the manager do and you need to you need to organise yourselves. Would, would you be OK then in, in watching Celtic dig out a nil-nil or a 1-1 a one, one in, in Atalanta and, and, and not really have a go. Because when you go away to places like that, you have to, you, you have to dig in and you don't see a great game. You don't see a free-flowing match. The Arsenal game was a great example. Yeah. I mean, Danny, even Real Madrid wouldn't go there and play open football. They would go there with a mindset of, first and foremost, we don't get beat. We grow into the game and then we can then impose ourselves on the game as the game goes on. Because what happens is the crowd get frustrated, mm. teams get frustrated. You can then start to play a bit and get the ball forward, get it wide. I mean, Neil Lennon on commentary I thought was fantastic. He, yeah, it was good. so simple. Mm. He said what they, should, what they should be doing is sitting in, playing it down the channels where Celtic have got pace. We've got pace to burn in Maeda, Kyogo... Couldn't, and stay in uh, the game, Mark. Stay in the game. Although, although, Mark, Mark, you have you have just said you, even you thought you could have a go, and and I know. you know, so well, it's no, no. It, it's lesson learned, isn't it? I think I think the big question mark is going to be the next game. How how you respond? Yeah, I don't mean on the weekend. I mean in 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 Italy. Mark, before you go, this is the kind of message that we're getting at this end. Jim, why are you banging on about Celtic? This is nothing new for Scottish teams. Scottish football is a farmers' league. And that's all it ever will be. Well, let's go. Let's move on then. I mean, <laughs> does that baffle you, Mark? It baffles me. People forget well, Celtic were the first club to win it. The, yeah, but you know that's that's history, Jim. Ancient history, quite frankly. It's about the here and now, mm. and it's very hard to defend our league when we're getting battered. Rangers have been battered in the past. 
Uh, no other team really ever makes it into the... I think Aberdeen or... So, somebody's in the, the, the league stage of one of the other trophies. Is Aberdeen or Hearts? I can't remember. Coming up. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's hard to defend the league. Uh, I listened to Jason Cundy last night doing his usual, and you just sit there and go, well, we've just got to take it because he's, he's mostly right, quite frankly. <laughs> Mark, listen, thanks for that. What are you thinking? Well, what I'm thinking is... You're is pulling that, a variety of well, faces, I, I do which because, quite entertain me. I, I do because the game gets away from Celtic. So you're getting beat 5-1 at half-time. What's the message in the dressing room? Bank up and accept a 5-1 defeat and get absolutely slaughtered for losing losing 5-1. Because you're going to get slaughtered for losing 5-1. So how do you approach the second half? If you go into you don't this stay game, open. Well, you, you, you get, so the result is you get beat 5-1. The only and you're going to get, you're you're gonna get slaughtered for getting beat 5-1. If you get beat 6-1, you're going to get slaughtered. You're going to be slaughtered for 7-1. I look at it and say, our criticism is that Brendan Rodgers was brave. Foolishly brave, Matt, perhaps. So we would rather our managers not be brave and, and make a mistake and then pivot off that mistake. I look at it and say what the, what the caller was talking about, which is teams go and look at them. Danny's a, Danny will have played in sides. You looked at that. You looked at that Dortmund side that just got smashed five one by Stuttgart. A game ago, oh, was, it, was, it, was it? Yeah, maybe doesn't matter. Two they still got, so yeah, they, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Celtic would have looked at this game and thought we fancy ourselves in this game, mm. and so they had a go and they got caught in a in a in a helter skelter mo- twenty minutes inside a game where they concede four or five goals. So I look at it and go, well, we can catastrophize it if you want. We can take it back to the past, and who cares whether Celtic won the the, the, the European Cup in ninety six? Preston won the FA Cup in eighteen hundred. Does that mean they got to win it now? I mean, it's I, irrelevant. I wonder, what, I wonder what Celtic fan John thinks about the tactics going into it, John. Tell me what you think, mate. Good morning. Morning, Jim. Morning, Simon. Morning, Danny. Morning, John. Love the show, as always. Thank you. Um, it's becoming a regular thing in Europe now um, when we're on, on the back end of these results. Uh, not giving these higher-quality teams enough respect and playing this sort of kamikaze-type football um, we should be doing what we can to take advantage of this new Champions League format. We've got a great chance to qualify. Mm, you have. And Indeed. We, we, we played similar tactics with Ange. And he says after a Real Madrid game that unless we play this type of football, we won't know where we stand, which is fair enough. But you have to take lessons from that. And it still hasn't happened. Um, we've had all this time to build up to the game and I would have preferred just sitting back and hitting them on the counter-attack. Can I just ask you, though, when you say that, because we just had another caller on and we did go down the line of talking about the confidence start to the season, great football, the first win in the Champions League game, breeding confidence and belief. And, And also, this format, which you just talked about, with the home games you've got, you'd expect to win especially how good you are at home. Yeah. So would it be fair to say, actually, it might have been worth the risk to have a goal? Because, because it's not the group stages. We've still got those games to come, though. It's, you have to take advantage of these games, and I do get what you're saying. And if but... they sat in and lost 2-0 in two goals in the last 10 minutes, I'm sure there'd be some Celtic fans saying we should have had a go of. But what you don't want to do is miss out in a playoff place on goal difference. No, and I take 7-1 is hard to take. You shouldn't lose 7-1. John, your namesake. Another John is waiting to come on. Very briefly, John, good morning. What do you want to say? Good morning, gents. Good morning. Um, I've, listened, I've listened to my two fellow Celtic fans there, and a lot of the points that have been made have been excellent. A lot of the points you, Simon and Danny, have made have been excellent. And Jim, what I don't want to do is go crashing down a hill on Brendan Rodgers. But I have to tell you, Mark said he texted his mates before the game yesterday feeling confident. I text my mates telling them to get behind the sofa and close your eyes for 90 minutes, Jim, an hour before the game. Right. Anybody could see what was going to happen there last night. We had no holding midfield player. Simon touched on this earlier on. We went in there playing 4-3-3. The commentator before the game said, quote, we're going in there with the same side played St Johnston on Saturday and we're away at Dortmund in a Champions League game, Jim. Mm. 100%. And I don't like criticising them, Jim. I'm not really in that No, band. no. No, I know, Jim. No, it's an observation, that, isn't that, it? That, yeah. That, Danny, that's down to the manager. Mm, that's that down to the manager. He set that side up last night. It's also worth noting as well, ch- uh, Chaps, he didn't even bother to try and protect those two centre-halves last night. Now, we've got the kid Scales, who's he's, he's not an honest pro. He's never going to be a great player. He's an honest pro. And the kid we bought from Sheffield United in the summer, who I think has played about a half a football, 
since the season started. Yeah. He'd done nothing to protect that back four last night. And you could see it jump from the first couple of minutes. They turned at pace and ran at us, and we were nowhere. So that's down to the manager, unfortunately, last night. We need to learn from it. I have to be honest with you, Danny. I heard what you said earlier. I don't think he will. I think he'll go 4-3-3 in Atalanta because that is Brendan Rodgers all over the back. Now, if he doesn't, I'll be the first one to put my hand up and say mm. I got it wrong. But I, I think he'll go there again. I think he'll be 4-3-3. The other problem we've got, lads, we don't actually have a holding midfield player at the club. Really? For reasons past and understanding. We don't, we don't have anyone, Danny. If, if Celtic fans could tell me who that is, then I'd love to know. Yeah. Manchester City, one of the best sides in Europe. I've got Rodri before his injury. Arsenal have got Rice and Party, top, top sides. In their side, whether they go 4-3-3 or not, Danny. Oh, you need one. Midfield mm. player, they've got someone. And, and you're right, John, about your point you made about Liam Scales and Austin Trusty. I mean, they need people around. John, listen, thank you. Thank you so much for for, for your yeah, call. Uh, honest and open, and that's what we want in the show this morning. There's also a nuance, you know. When we trot out, they get beat 6-0 by Atletico Madrid. They got, they got a man sent off within 20 minutes of the game. So we've got to give some context yeah. to some of these results yeah. as well. No, they that's played, fair. They that's played Atletico, Atletico Madrid two weeks earlier, drew 2-2 at Celtic Park, went to their place. Played well, actually. I saw that game. And got beat six, but they had a man sent off in the first 20 minutes. I think so when, also, we, we, when we context these things, we do have to give nuance to it. Yeah, But, and, but uh, you also hear the Celtic fans saying, no, tactical, na- tactical naivety is a theme here. Well, <laughs> they're saying it. Well, yeah, they're saying it, but, the, but they're also saying that they expected, half of them are saying we expected a really good outcome in this game. We were optimistic. So they go after a good outcome, and of course they get unwound. And they get unwound in a 20, 25 minute period during the game, and the rest of it's gone after If it that. happens again in the next game, then. Then, then yeah. they've got something to say. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.